At a funeral in the rural areas, there is a lot of work to be done. Fetching water, firewood, stones, bricks and other things to save for Tonde. Tonde is sitting down where the elders are sitting. The young men are not happy with this because Tonde is the only one who knows everything that needs to be done as the mourners wait for the body of the deceased that is still to come to the rural home. The elders are keeping him close and constantly consulting him. Listen to me. You see, among all these old men, nobody knows how your late brother's funeral police works. Tonde here is a friend who works at Nyarazu. The friend is helping us with all the information, so we need Tonde close to us. You should be thanking Tonde because everything is really nyore nyore. I just remember that I have a friend in Yarat. Maybe I can help if Tonde can't find his phone. Introducing Sawi the chatbot from Nyarazo. Speak to Sawi for all your queries and inquiries. The benefits of having Sawi by your side are endless. When you need to know about our policy, Nyarazo products, payment platforms, claims, the Sawira International Plan, where to find the Nyarazo branches, Nyarazo contact details, how to apply, and any questions you may have. And she can help you find who you want to speak to. For your convenience, you can ask about anything, from our funeral services, counseling to your payments, and much more. Experience the benefit of having Sawi by your side. App Sawi today on WhatsApp number 712 Double nine two eight nine two Nyarazo Sawira Mukuru Omgane Omkul Hello football fans, welcome to another exciting episode of In Touch with the Legend. Yes, this is your favorite footballing show where we bring you a Zimbabwe footballing legend to come and discuss with us or to come and share with us their footballing journey. Yes, we are talking about football legends. I also hope that you guys are having a very, very enjoyable, joyous 2023. I hope you have started the year on a very, very good note. Today in the studio, we have got a legend who is the best in the United Kingdom. He's a very young legend. You know, he played a professional football in England, but his career was cut short by injury. But he had a very, very interesting story already at that tender age. So he is here in the studio to talk, take us through his journey in football, where he came from. Some of us, I only started knowing him when he was already playing for Ipswich in the English in Championship. But we don't know exactly where he came from. I was always inquisitive. I always wanted to know where exactly he started his career. He is Zimbabwean, yes. And a lot of people, they never saw him play here in the Zimbabwe Premier Soccer League because he grew up in England as well. He left when he was still a kid. But he is here now in the studio to take us through his story. I am talking about the former Ipswich midfielder, Tristan Nydem. Yes, Tristan. Welcome to the show. Thank, thank you for having me. Thank you, thank you very much for coming. You know, I've always been intrigued. You know, I follow youngsters who are playing in the uh, English Premiership, in the junior national teams, in the junior uh, teams of England as well. And you were very, I was very interested when I heard that you are Zimbabwean and you're playing for a top, a top side in England. Yeah. And then I happened to meet your dad yeah. as well. Yeah. And then I got, got even more interested and I started asking about, but you know, I know a little bit about mm. you, but Zimbabweans, you know, they got interested because we started talking about you. Yeah. You know, everybody started talking about Tristan Nydam, and but they didn't know the story. Where did it all come from? Where were you born? 
I was born, yeah. I lived here until I was six. And then, then I moved to the UK. My mom had moved to the UK. So mm -hmm. all of us had moved there uh, with my mom. And then, but I was living here until I was six with my dad. Oh, okay. Where, yeah. where, where, where were you born? Where, where exactly were you born in? <laughs> I don't know. You have to ask my dad that question. <laughs> I, I was born in Harare, but I don't know which hospital. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, oh, I don't okay. know where. Okay. Um, then when, when did you start uh, knowing or feeling that, you know, I, I can play football when you start kicking the ball around? Uh, probably when I was small, from maybe, maybe when I was five, five, six. Mm -hmm. I was at St. Michael's playing soccer at St. Michael's. Um, and from there, I kind of knew. I, I, I knew I was good. Um, and then, yeah, I moved to, to England, so I had to, to find teams in England, and then... Maybe, at that age? At, yeah, so seven, six. yeah, six, seven, I started playing in England. England's so big for football. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's teams from, even now, I coach children that are four upwards. Four um, years old? Mm. You're already coaching? You're coaching, yeah. So yeah. when I was there, I was in England maybe a year and a half, two years, and then I got scouted to go to Ipswich. How did you get scouted? So uh, it came from my brother. My brother was first scouted when he was 14, 13, 14. Oh, you got um, a brother? Yeah, my older brother. What, he was, what's the name of his name? His name's Miguel. Oh, Miguel. Yeah, okay, so he was, at Ips, he was scouted at Ipswich. We were playing for the same Sunday league team. Mm -hmm. um, and then the scout that scouted him came to watch me. Um, and then, yeah, when I was eight, nine years old, I went to Ipswich. Mm -hmm. So it's all because of my brother that... Oh, your, yeah. your brother was now playing, was, was playing at, at, at Ipswich. Right? Yeah. At Ipswich. Yeah. He's still there. No, no, no. My brother stopped playing when he was 16. Um, then he, now he's a coach. He moved to Australia. He's coaching in Australia now. Why did he stop playing? He got released when he was 16. So Then he decided he didn't want to play? Uh, he tried to carry on, but uh, it wasn't working for him. So he, he went down the education side. He went to college. Mm. Then he went to uni, did his degree. Then he, he got into coaching and he, he loves coaching. So from oh, yeah, there, yeah. he moved to Australia and now he's coaching in Australia. Oh, he's coaching in Australia. Yeah. Oh, that's exciting. That's exciting. Yeah. But Miguel's story is the story for another day. Yeah, exactly. yeah, we're, talking, yeah. we're talking about, uh, about, about, about Tristan. So how did, you, how did you find your first, uh, your first days at Ipswich when you just come from uh, the Sunday League uh, so and now you're at Ipswich? It, 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 I think it was tough. Uh, from what I can remember, I, I went on a six-week trial. So initially, you start a trial period. You don't just sign. Even after uh, being scouted? So yeah, you get scouted, but then they still have to see how you fare against boys that are now at the next level. Next level, yeah. 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 So you do a six-week trial period, and I think everyone everyone liked me from that trial period. I got signed, um, uh, but what from what I can't really remember too much. But I think it was a a, a lot more challenging. From I was going from scoring hat tricks and whatnot in Sunday league to then yeah, yeah, not yeah, scoring yeah. in uh, at Ipswich. Ipswich. Yeah. So we, we started at, at which age group? Uh, under nines, so from under nines under all nine. the way to to first team. You see, yeah. you see, you see, I'm smiling. That's yeah. quite exciting, you know, because yeah. for me, that's what I know. Uh, that's what football yeah. development is all about. You know, started at under eight. I, I I started playing at under eight. Yeah. You know, going 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 up. Something that is not happening now in Zimbabwe. So I'm yeah. glad that we've got you here. Who actually went through the that, whole process mm. of of development to take us up to actually take us through. The, do you still remember who was who was coaching you when you were playing in the Yeah, Alamans? so his name was Matt Smith and then his assistant was a guy called Mickey Banthorpe, an older guy. Um, Matt Smith, actually, I saw him maybe two months ago at an Ipswich game and he still remembered me. Yeah, yeah, uh, it's, yeah. A fun, it's funny because when I moved to secondary school, so in England, so with, you know, you have Form 1, Form 2, yeah, when I was in Form 1 upwards, he was my teacher in secondary school. Well, he was actually a teacher yeah, as so well, also teacher teaching as well. at He was a teacher and then... Uh, he was a computer teacher and then he was also a coach. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah. So I saw him a few week, weeks ago. He now works at Arsenal. Oh, um, is Yeah, oh, so I still remember for all my coaches from under nines to... So the under nines is actually the head coach and then assistant coach. Yeah, yeah. It's then under nines. Yeah, yeah. And then under tens the same, under elevens the same, under Oh, it's not, you don't jump the age groups. It's under nine, 10, ten 11, yeah, 12. Yeah, but so for me, when I, when I got to under 14, I started, I never really played with my own age group. I would always play above. Uh, above. Yeah. When you arrive, so when you arrive, they started seeing that you are, you are talented enough, so they started... Yeah, so when I was young, I would always maybe play with my own age group. There was a few boys that would never play with us. They would always play up. But then as we got older, I became the person... I started playing playing higher and higher. Um, so from when I was under 14, under 15, under 16... When I was under 16, I hardly... I played with my own age group four times. Is because it? I'd be playing so with when you team. when you when you when you going the promotion mm. is is it gradual or is just like automatic like next year I'm now under 
next year I'm, I'm in the other age group. So German you go on the nines and the tens, but then it's also, uh, so it, the, the coaches, they see how you do throughout the year. Exactly, yes. Yeah, that's so what if, I, that's if, yeah, I if you don't do well, you'll get released. There's a few boys who got, a lot of boys, they would go through the years, they would get released and that's how it is. So you'd have to they try. Want to, they always want to maintain the quality. Exactly, yeah. So they will see, ah, this one is not, it's not good uh, enough, not so you'd go. So or yeah, even from, the develop, your development. Yeah. The, yeah. You might be good at nine years old, but, then but by 13 14, years old, exactly. then you're like, you, yeah. your development you is stunted. Yeah, is, exactly. You're stuck and yeah. you can see and that. that uh, and then you, know, you, have to, you, have to, you have to have to pass yourself on and then you go, you can either find another club or you stop. It's very playing. tough. Out there. Yeah, it's, it's very, and I, I think a lot of kids in the UK, they, they struggle sometimes because, you know, they, they go and that's all they do, play football and that's all they know. And then when they stop playing, it's, it's hard for them. Yeah, then they get released, then they have it's to hard. go to, a, exactly. to, to, to a something else. They have, to, they have to try, they have to go to another club or they have to start again. So I think it's, it's hard for some kids, um, but it's, it's football. So was it your ambition to, be, to play for Ipswich when you, when you were like in the under 9s, yeah. under 10s? Did you think like, I want to play for Ipswich uh, first team? Or you were thinking, you know what, but I can actually go and play in the uh, junior, in the academy, at Liverpool Academy. Yeah. I, can, I can play in the Arsenal Academy. No, so Did you have that? I, it was, I always wanted to progress and just get as, as far as I can. Um, when I was 15, 16, there was teams that wanted me. Arsenal was a big team that were in for me, but I never um, chose to go down that route. I always wanted to go to, to Ipswich first and find my way there, find my pathway at Ipswich. Oh, when you started, when you started, when you started at under nine, what, mm. what, what league? At what level was Ipswich? So the Ipswich the first team was still in the championship. In the championship. Yeah, but so when when you're in the, um, an academy, they don't do leagues as such. Mm -hmm. um, it's just you play play other academy teams. Yeah, that's and like then, friendly matches. Yeah, not around. yeah. They they basically friendly. Yes, yeah. And then as you start progressing, getting older, then under sixteen, under 14s, 15s, it gets more competitive. There's still not a league. Mm -hmm. um, and then under eighteens, under twenty ones, that's when you start playing. Oh, no, in, a in the league and yeah. playing for something and then obviously the first team um, that's the goal yeah do you remember any any youngsters that actually uh, made it big you played with in the from Atlanta from Ipswich terms, yeah so Ipswich. there's a boy I played with his name's Flynn Downs he's now at West Ham um, another boy Andre Dazal he's in the championship at QPR um, there's a guy Blue Gufunden I've played so he's at Ipswich still so there's a few guys I progressed with that are now still playing, playing like I think we had a good one, two, two to three years of teams that were very good footballers, and now have progressed, progressed nicely. Is it? So you, 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 you said that you were at, at fourteen, you were mm. already playing ah, in, yeah. in, in in the under sixteen, yeah. under seventeen. Yeah. So when 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 did you when when did you actually feel that you know what? I've got a shot. I can actually play. When I was for, 14. For, for Ipswich first team. For yeah. Ipswich first team, you, can, you could actually feel that I can, yeah. I can so make it. When, when I was 14, uh, my first year as an under 14, so I would have been 13 at the time, I got offered mm -hmm. a scholarship. So I got offered a scholarship two years before anyone else. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Because yeah. I think the coaches, they saw something in me. And then six months mm -hmm. later, they offered me my first professional contract, which I was only allowed to sign when I was 17. Okay. So already they put in... Well, you were the, offered the contracts... If, when you were when still I was, 15? When I was 14. 14? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, so I was offered and then, but I can only legally, legally sign it when I'm 17. Yeah. Um, so yeah, when I was 14, I was offered that. Um, so I kind of knew that's what I wanted, that I, I could progress. Already, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. 15, 16, I started, I had a one or two training sessions with the first team. Um, so when I was 16, I was already playing with under 18s. How did you feel playing with the training with the first team when you were still? Ah, like, I was very nervous. Well? I was very, very nervous. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. But it's it's amazing. It's, it's uh, being a footballer has ended a lot of boys' dreams, and yeah, yeah. for me, I could not sense that it was going to happen because you still have to work extremely but, hard. Yeah, but, but you, you could touch. You, you, you could feel you that could, yeah. within the touching distance. Training with them shows that the level you have to get to and what what you need to achieve to get to that. So. Yeah. Um, it was a big learning experience. Um, the tempo was so fast paced, and but yeah, no, it's. Mm. Do you remember any some of, some of the senior players that were in the Ipswich first team at that time? Yeah, they, so Luke Chambers, game? David McGoldrick, who then went on to play in the Premier League for Sheffield United. Mm -hmm. um, I really, I remember a lot of boys: Tommy Smith, Cole Skuse. They were all still there even when I broke into the team. Mm. So when I was training there, 
um, a few years later, they were still there when I when I played. And they remembered you. Uh, this is the boy that came when he was still fourteen. Uh, I don't know if they remembered me, <laughs> but uh, because I, yeah. because I, I still <laughs> continue to train. So when I became sixteen, seventeen, I was training with them more often. Mm -hmm. So it's not like they had to remember me because I was already training with them. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm. So when did you when did you uh, when did you get uh, get your first break to actually? get promoted, now you are training. Good yeah. playing, because mm. now you are now training, when I, with, after you signed. Yeah, so I'd say maybe when I was uh, 16, 17, when I was a first year scholar. So yeah. in England, what when you after you, so as a scholar, it's basically an education program, like an apprentice. Mm -hmm. So instead of going to college, we went to, to play football. To play football. Yeah, okay, so yeah. we still have to do education and stuff. So my first year as a scholar, uh, 16, 17, that's when I started training with them more often. Mm -hmm. Then the next year, that's when I broke in. Then when you signed your first, your, your so, first professional contract. So I signed my first professional contract when I was a first year scholar. Was tech, was, yeah, yeah. So I, mm -hmm. when I was a first year scholar, when I turned 17, the day I turned 17, I, I signed. Um, and that's when I started yeah, training more often with the first team. Um, in that January, I got on the bench for the first team. Um, How did you feel? It was amazing. Uh, yeah. Again, I was very, even though I was only on the bench, I was very nervous. Yeah, but just still, never yeah, yeah. Which, what against, can against which team? Uh, Huddersfield. Huddersfield. Yeah. So I was on the bench for that game. Um, unfortunately, and then the, 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 that same year, I played for England under 18s. Yeah. Which year, which, year, which year was this? Because I remember Twin. Peter, Peter Njov played for Huddersfield. Yeah. Was he still there? That no, time no, no. Yet, Peter Njov, I think he's, uh, <laughs> I think he's way before my time. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I was, what year would it have been? 2017, oh, okay. I think it would have been. Yeah. Then you were on the, you were on the bench. I was on the bench. You never, you never came on. Never came on, no. And then um, I'd actually spoken to the manager at the time was Mick McCarthy, um, and I was, he said if I'd stayed fit and everything, I'd have made my debut that season. But I went away with England, um, and I came back injured, and then I played, I played in a game for the 23s, uh, got injured again, and that, that kind of stopped, stopped what, what was supposed to happen. Tell me, tell me, that game, I want to go back to, mm. to that. How, how, did, how, how, how did you uh, get the, the information or the... Uh, the call up that you are now going to to be on the bench and the first team. Uh, so I had a training session with the first team. I'd actually yeah, I'd actually been injured for a while and I had a training session with the first team. And the uh, the session I was in the session I was the best player. Okay. Um, and then from there they they just asked me to come and be on the bench because I think they had a few injuries. Um, mm. So the manager he called me in and said, "Who was yeah, the manager?" Mick McCarthy. Oh, Mick McCarthy. Yeah. I remember Mick McCarthy. Yeah, so yes, yeah. He, he pulled me in, in and, and just said, I'd like, to, like, you, like you to travel. And then, yeah, from there I traveled with them. Oh, it was an away match? Yeah. I never expected to be on the bench, but um, on the Friday evening he said, if you want to call people and tell them to come, you'll be on the bench. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I was on the bench, but I never came on. How old were you then? 17. 17? Yeah. That's actually mm. quite, quite good. And mm. when did you make your, like your debut to so, actually come on and play. So at the end of the se that season, we went into the next season, pre-season. And from that pre-season, I was with the first team the whole way. I was mm -hmm. in the first, they put me in the changing room, me, Flynn and Andre. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so three of us went in the first team changing room, mm -hmm. um, played the whole pre-season with them. Luton. Yeah, so I started that game and then I, we won that game 2-0. So then I started in the game in the championship. How did you do in that one? In that I played game? well. I yeah. played well, yeah. So from there, then I started the next game in the championship. Um, didn't play so well, so no. I got dragged off at half time. <laughs> <laughs> that first game against mm. Luton, did you call? Did you make some calls at home? I'm playing. Come yeah, on, so me. yeah, so yeah, who uh, came the, the, the day before the game, usually the team gets announced who's yeah, going to yeah. be starting. Yeah. Um, so from there, I knew I was playing, and my brother, my two brothers came, yeah. and one of my old my Miguel's good friends. Yeah, yeah. So they they came to watch me in my first game, and then. Yeah, then. And on the on the field, did you uh, like look for them? No, I didn't see them. Check them out. No, because no, they they were sitting yeah. with the away fans, so it's okay, hard yeah. to when you to when you're playing, crowd, it's hard yeah. to to see them in the crowd. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. But you enjoyed the match. Yeah, yeah, I enjoyed. I started very nervous, but uh, when I got into it, I found my flow and. And, and then the second game. Uh, se second game was in the championship against Barnsley. Yeah, yeah. Started that one, but I never. It was from the Luton game to that game. The intensity, Luton were a League 2 team at the oh, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then going into a championship game, the intensity was a lot different. So I got pulled off at half time. 
um, but we still won the game. You, but you feel you feel you didn't you didn't do so well. No, not in the Barnsley game, but again, my chance would have come another time. So I started. Yeah, I was yeah, still yeah. training, so I got I got taken off, but I was still coming off the bench. Yeah. In games. No, we're gonna we're gonna go through those yeah. games again. We're just gonna go for a break. When we come back, we wanna carry on. We just wanna know your early early days yeah. at uh, Ipswich as a teenager playing yeah. for Ipswich and all and, and, and growing yeah. in the team as well. We're gonna go that uh, go that route as well in the second segment of the show. Okay. But for now, we're just gonna go for a break. When we come back, we carry on. Yes, guys, we've got uh, Tristan Nidham in the studio for those that are just joining us. Yes, he is a former Ipswich player. He was born here in Zimbabwe, left Zimbabwe at six years old and started playing for Ipswich. Switch junior teams at nine years, at six years old, I think. Yeah, that's at seven, six, eight, eight in the under nines. You know, I, I'm trying to, to make you believe that, you know what, if you're at home, if you've got a kid that is four or five years old, he's also coaching now, we'll be talking about it. You can already take your kid to play football at four years old, five years old. He was there under nines at Ipswich, that's a professional team in England. So don't move away, we're gonna be carrying on with the Tristan Nydam interesting story. You are going to love it, just don't move away. Funeral cover and repatriation services to the Zimbabweans in the diaspora as well as their families back home. Get a Sawir International plan today. Losing the person I loved the most was one of the hardest things I've ever had to face. And because I was away from home, it made it much more difficult. That is when I saw how important it is to have a friend. A friend to ease the burden. A friend to take care of things when you can't. A friend to help you get home. Welcome to the next segment, to the second segment of the show, In Touch with a Legend. Yes, we are with uh, Tristan Nydam in the studio telling us about his uh, football life in the United Kingdom. But before we get into the next segment, please, we would like you to go to our Facebook page and like the page. Also go to our YouTube channel, follow the channel as well, and also subscribe to the channel so that we can always communicate with you whenever we've got some features that we want you to watch on the channel and on the Facebook page. But for now, we're back with uh, with with, with uh, Nydam uh, Nydam Tristan. So you you played your first game. Yeah. So what went through your head then when you are a youngster, uh, 17 years yeah. old, and you play a game, you get taken off at after? Obviously, it's hard. Um, you know, you're you're young, getting taken off at half time. It's mm -hmm. not a, it's not a nice feeling. And I re always remember after the game, we were down. We had won the game, but um, I was down, and the manager said, "Just you know, don't be down. Your chance will come again." Um, mm -hmm. So you have to c carry on training. And even from then, I was getting brought on as a substitute, and um, I'm on, I was only young, so I can't exp I couldn't expect to to be playing all the time. Yeah. Um, so from there, uh, yeah, I. Um, just I kept uh, getting brought on as a substitute, and you still got to train hard. So yeah, yeah you still had to go and train. And, yeah. And what did the coach say to you though? You no, know, you, you just got to keep working, keep keep your head down, keep focused. Um, and then my chance came again. I had gone gone away with England under 19s at this time. Mm -hmm. um, I'd gone away with them, um, and then when I came back, I, uh, I I started playing again. I think I played six or seven seven games. Um, in a row, starting. Mm, mm, mm. Um, I had played in the East Anglia. Mick McCarthy was still the coach. Yes, still the coach with T Terry Connor, the assistant. And uh, where is so he now, though? Mick Mc he's not a coaching anyone. He was last at Cardiff. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. um, yeah. So from there, I played against Norwich, which is 
Ipswich's biggest game. Um, it's their rivals, the East Anglian rivals. Oh, and yeah, I yeah. actually played in that game on Sky Sports. Um, mm. How did it feel? You, it was amazing. You, this is a big game yeah. and it's going to be on Sky yeah, Sport and yeah. everything and all the people are going to be watching. No, it was a massive game and I almost <laughs> had an opportunity to score, but I didn't. I didn't but yeah. um, it was, I think they all thought, like, I think uh, I was a lot, I was quiet in the dressing room, so everyone thought I was nervous because, you know, you go through these games in the academy and even in the academy, they're the biggest games. Yeah, yeah. Um, so to then be experiencing it at first team level, um, it was amazing. Um, unfortunately, we didn't win. But uh, yeah, it was it was an incredible experience. Yeah. So you can, you, you it, it it gave you the boost. Yeah. That, so the dreams that you, I'm I'm gonna carry on. I'm mm. gonna carry on. We're gonna qualify for. The, did you even dream about like we want to get into the into the into the Premier League or it was like no, oh, of yeah, course we Ipswich we yeah. we we are here we play in the Championship. No. So Ipswich is a is a big club. Um and I don't it's you know they used they were play, played in the last time they played in the Premier League was two thousand and two. Um, and okay. then they were in the championship for 17, 18 years. Then when Mick McCarthy left the next season, they got relegated to League One. Mm. Um, so, but it's, it's a very big club with a big, big fan base. They've won yeah. the UEFA Cup back in the 80s. Did um, they? Yeah. But so they're, they're, they're a big club. Um, and a lot of people expect them. I'm not sure uh, expect them to be in the Premier League, but they're, they're a big enough club to be in the Premier to be, League. To be in the yeah. Premier League. Yeah. So at that time, what was the dream? What was the ambition of the club? Was the, it to uh, get in there uh, or to, to, make, to, to keep up? No, at that time it was, it was you, we had started the season on winning five games. So at that, at that yeah. point we were second. So, <coughs> yeah. um, so you were now dreaming. I, yeah, so I don't think we went into the season expecting to get promoted. But you know, when you're winning those games and you never know what can happen. But uh, where we finished, because we didn't have funds, the, the Ipswich, they're not a rich club. They weren't a rich club at the time. Um, they were probably we were one of the lowest um, transfer budgets in the league. Okay. Um, so to, to finish where we did, I think, was a good achievement. Um, because the next year we got relegated. So I think uh, the, 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 to finish top half of the championship, I think, was a, was a, mm. a decent achievement. Um, I don't think anyone expected promotion. But you never know what could have happened. Then you got, then you got relegated. Yeah. So, so the next year, Mick McCarthy left. Mm -hmm. We had a change of manager. Um, we had a pre-season, and on, uh, that year I went on loan for, so for six months. I was in Scotland on loan at a team called St Johnston, who well, are yes, in the, Johnston, yeah, yeah. the SPL. Um, mm -hmm. So for six months I was on loan. That manager that came in in the summer, he got sacked. So another new manager came in, um, and then for me, that's now that's so hard for me to to try and break in because you've had a change of manager when you're on at a club in club. Scotland and yeah. that's, in Scotland I wasn't really playing um, so I came back in January and I, I didn't really feature for the rest of the season I wanted I wanted I wanted to ask mm. championship yeah then the Scotland mm. Premier League St Johnson yeah which was, which was a better which was a better option if you the championship at, Ipswich yeah, it's, it's actually it's actually uh, more competitive than in the, yeah. in the Scottish yeah, League. Yeah, really? the championship is a very competitive league. Scotland, there's only twelve teams. Yeah, I know, there's yeah. only ever two teams battling for the for the title, which is Celtic and. So Rangers. tell me, <laughs> <laughs> if you look at St. Johnson, mm. if you try to bring them into the uh, English um, mm -hmm. professional setup, yeah. which league do they could be playing? A low end League One. I league, and league two. two, yeah. So oh, in yeah. between those two, two, two leagues. So basically, Scottish Scottish Premier League mm. is your championship. Yeah, uh, yeah, t yeah, it's, yeah. It's a, I think it's a. Or only League the, One. There's only the two clubs that. Would, if you remove, if you remove Sco uh, the, the, the Glasgow, Rangers, the Glasgow yeah. teams, yeah. Uh, Rangers and Celtic, uh, then league. it becomes League Two. No, League One. I would say. League One. <laughs> yeah, if you remove those two teams, then it becomes League One. Is yeah. it? Oh, not okay. meaning to disrespect the league, but no, no, not, we are just yeah. being, uh, being yeah. just being honest and yeah. being, uh, being being factual. So coming back, don't, then how did you come back? You went on loan. Yeah. Then you, then so you I came back in the January transfer window. I never really played at St Johnston. Um, so I came back in the January transfer window. And why didn't you play? I don't know. Um, oh, okay. I think it's a question a lot of people. Or maybe I must ask, why did you go on loan? So I went the. I think when I went on loan. Um, they wanted new players to come in and uh, it's a new manager, so he wanted oh, yes, his own yes, players. Yes. Okay, yeah. So for me to go on loan, it enabled him to bring his own players in, which he okay. did. Um, and I needed to play. I didn't want to come and, go and, to, sit to sit and play yeah. with the 23s. Yeah. Um, so I went to St. John's and unfortunately that didn't work out. 
for whatever reason why. Mm -hmm. Came back in January and again I didn't didn't really play. Yeah, um, yeah. New manager had come in Ipswich at bottom of the championship. Mm -hmm. So I think he wanted to stick to what he knew and try and win some games, but yeah, unfortunately that didn't work out and we got relegated that year. Oh, it's, so you got relegated when you were not playing? Ah, maybe I, I didn't, want, playing. To, I didn't want to say were, that. Maybe, <laughs> <laughs> maybe you were playing, maybe, yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe they could have survived. Yeah. So what did you do? You went, you went with the team to, uh, to, to League One? Yeah, so that next year, um, there was the same manager, Paul Lambert. Um, he stayed in League One. Um, went on tour to Germany. Um, I started playing in a new position. So I was originally a midfielder. Then mm -hmm. I started playing left back that year. Um, started doing well, um, and then the same preseason, I uh, I got an injury a week and a half before the season was supposed to start. Oh, is that um, the injury that, uh, that yeah, cut short your career? Yeah, so I I uh, dislocated my ankle and broke my leg, all in the same tackle. Is it? Uh, yeah. What happened? What, what what happened? So I've gone. I was playing on the left side. I've passed it to my left foot. As I've passed it, he's almost caught. He's caught me as a, like a scissor. Um, and my leg just got caught, and yeah, so I dislocated my ankle, so my ankle was facing out, and yeah. Mm. How do you feel then? Um, <laughs> I, you know, you, what can you do? Um, yeah. It's, I what mean, it's, it's football, but I, I, obviously I was devastated. Uh, it was a week and a half before that, and I, I think I was going to start the season. Um, mm. So yeah, I was, I was devastated, and obviously I had a hard year before that. Um, the luck wasn't really on my side the year before that, and then now... Yeah, you also mm. talked about a few injuries mm. as well in, in, yeah. in, in between. Before, and, yeah, um, those injuries, they weren't so bad. It was just a few niggles, yeah. growing issues, and that was maybe growing. Yeah. Um, but this, this issue, yeah, it, I was supposed to be out six months. Um, month four, I still couldn't walk properly. Um, I'd gone to, to Mauritius and on holiday, and I thought, okay, maybe we, the sun will help. Came mm. back and had to have a, have a second operation in ja the January. So that was my season finished. Mm. Um, came back and then then COVID it. So oh, yeah. now with COVID, I wasn't getting the treatment as regularly. Um, then came back in the summer uh, again. Nothing had really improved. I started running a bit more, um, and then that that year another new manager came in, um, mm. Paul Cook. And then, uh, this is, so this would have been last year, 2021. Mm -hmm. um, I started playing again for the 23s. And then oh, you're I, now playing? Yeah, so it must have been a year and a half down the line. Um, almost two years. And then I started yeah. playing again. Um, so with the, with the 23s and then the new manager, he liked me. I got on the bench with the first team, um, came on. And then that, yeah, then this, that end of that season, I got released. Um, again, nothing I could have done. I yeah. my hands. I, I played one game in two years, so I couldn't. So, so you, 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 feed up, you, you feed again? Yeah. <coughs> I, so I was fit again at that point. Yeah. Um, got released. And then when I got released, it was now, what, what do we do? Yeah, um, yeah. Went back to Ipswich. They gave me another contract for six months mm -hmm. um, because I then had a third operation in the summer of 2021. 20, yeah. So uh, the third operation to try and get me fit, unfortunately, that didn't help. And then start of 2022, I, I stopped playing. You decided to stop? Yeah. Why did you uh, decide Doctor's away? advice um, was to, to stop playing. Um, he said I couldn't, couldn't play on the ankle anymore. Um, so yeah, that's, that's... But how were you feeling when you were playing? Uh, no, I couldn't. I wasn't the same. I couldn't, when, I, was, course, when yeah. I played, I couldn't, like I, I'd run, but I couldn't stop uh, because my, my, yeah. I can't get my knee to bend. Not, it's not a knee injury, but I can't get it to bend past my ankle, uh, past a certain way. So um, because of that issue, then I tore my hamstring. Um, so yeah, I had a, had a tough few few years, but yeah, then doctor's advice was to stop playing. Then you just decided, you know? Yeah, I just decided to stop. Um, that was January 22, uh, announced it in March 22. Um, Obviously, I've, I grew up playing soccer, so that's all I've ever known. Um, so it was a hard decision to make, but um, I'm, I'm, I'm happy in my life now. So, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's, uh, yeah. That's, that's, that, that's good. Mm. Every, every time you make, you make the best of, yeah. uh, of, of everything, you know, if your life is going this way, mm. blah, you, you have to take. I just want to take you back a little mm. bit uh, from... Uh, to back to, to, to your playing days yeah. as, a, as a teenager. Mm. You said that you were caught up. 
yeah. for the England under 19s. 18s and 19s. Under 18. Yes. Or England, they've got under 18 and 19. So as they well. go start 16s, 17s, 18s, 19s, 20s, 21s. The national yeah. teams? Yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah, okay. so they've got, that's the difference between, I think, England and Zim. I don't even know. Yeah, in Zim. Zim. Yeah. In Zim, we only have the, the first senior team. team. Yeah, I don't they, so. they, We don't have juniors yeah. anymore. We only have the, the, senior, the senior team, team. and that's it. Mm. We, 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 we played in the under-17s, but it mm. was under-17s, under-20, yeah. under-23s. I see. That's, yeah. how, that's, how, it, that's yeah. how it worked. Mm. But uh, that is gone. Yeah. Uh, right mm. now, we only have the, the Zim order. So how did you get the call-up? Because you were still playing in the... In the yeah. So, yeah, so in... Um, 2017, it would have been, I got called up for the under 18s. Um, I think at the time, the academy manager at Ipswich was pushing for that um, because he really liked me. Okay, um, yeah, yeah. His name was Brian Klug. <coughs> mm. And then, so yeah, I think it, I, was, I was called up on standby, which means if a player gets injured, yeah, yeah. I take their place. And a player got injured. So I took his place and we went to Qatar. Mm -hmm. um, so he played three games, uh, two against Qatar, one against Saudi With Arabia. With England under 18s? Yes. Where were some of your teammates that uh, uh, from back the then it was Reese James first call up so I would have played with Reese James, oh, yeah, yeah, Reese yeah. Nelson, Andre Dazelle was my teammate at Ipswich, um, yeah. Jaffet Tanganga was at Tottenham. Yeah, I know Tanganga. Um, yeah. Who else? Oh, he's uh, he's actually English. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, okay. he, he, his parents must be from somewhere else, but I, I think, think he was born Congo in England. Something. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, so it's the same as me. My, I, well, I was born here, yes. but I got the English passport. Yes, yeah, yeah. Um, so I'll, from there... We're still going to go there. Yeah. <laughs> so from there, <laughs> yeah. um, under, 18, uh, under 18s, I played. And then the next year, when I broke in, that was under 19s. Under 19s. Mm -hmm. Before we go to the under 19s, yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big fan yeah. of Rhys James. Mm. I, like yeah. the, I like the I ball. I think everyone does. I, yeah. I, think, I think he's one of the best footballers yeah. in the world. I don't know. I don't care what mm. other people think. Yeah. But I think he has got everything yeah. that you mm. need, mm. especially in his position, yeah. his, his quality. Yeah. How, 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 how was, did you feel, was he, was, he, was he looking like he was going to be this big mm. at that time? Um, I wouldn't say so, no. Um, I, he wasn't like one of the main figures as a, mm. as a, young, as a young boy, um, but he was, he was a very good player. Um, everything looked easy for him. Mm. Yeah. Because he is, he makes things look so easy. Yeah. He has mm. got everything. He's got the strength, he's got the skill, the pace, he's got yeah. the technique, mm. the speed, yeah. everything. Mm. And he's got the temperament as well. He's yeah. very cool. Yeah. Mm. He's very cool. He's not, yeah. he's not your, your, no your, more. Yeah, yeah. your emotional type. Yeah. He's, everything is cool. Yeah. It's actually quite good playing yeah. with Drew's Gems. Yes, yeah. man. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Then you graduated. You, you were called again to the under-19. Yeah, so the next year... Um, I got called up to the under 19s, 19s? Um, under 19s or one of the under 19s or 20s, one of the two. Yeah. But uh, I got called up to them. Um, that's when I broke into the Ipswich first team. So now I was playing championship. Oh yeah, and playing for you. And for, you yeah. Called, get so called to the I was yeah. one of me and Flynn Downs. We were one of the only people or boys playing men's football at the time because we had Ipswich in the championship team playing men's football. And the other kids are still with the academies. They, 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 with the, they, so they are Chelsea, Arsenal. So they playing under twenty three football oh, okay, yeah, at yeah. Their, their clubs. At their clubs. Um, so yeah. for us, yeah, it was. Remember any some in some of some of the players in the under? Uh, so it would have been Joe Willock again, Rhys James, Mason Mount, Trevor Shalaba, um, Rhys Nelson. And then um, those are big players. Some now. big, yeah. So that was at the start of that that year. I yeah. got called up. I played against Poland. We beat them seven one. Mm -hmm. um, I hit the crossbar, um, and then Andy Nketiah scored the rebound. And then so yeah, that was that was that year. And then I had a few more call ups, but I had to withdraw through injury, through most of them. And then the end of the year, I got called up to a camp in Spain. Um, mm -hmm. So that was a training camp, and again for uh, which for age group? Under nineteen. Under nineteens. Uh, so in the in the summer there was an under okay, twenty yeah. competition, a Euro. Mm -hmm. um, so then there that I would have played with Phil Foden again, Trevor Shalaba, Flynn, Rhys James, um, and then from, through in that summer the next year um, I got called up to the England Euro uh, campaign, which I turned down because I stayed at Ipswich. What do you mean? So. Um, because a new manager had come in, um, I got I actually I'd, I'd got called up to the England uh, the the Euros for the under twenties. Under twenties. Yeah, yeah, but because the new manager had come in and you want to show him what you can do, I I rejected the call up and I stayed at Ipswich that that summer. Hmm. 
You 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 actually refused to go to the I didn't refuse, to, but I you just you rejected. turned it down. Yes, yeah. You said yeah. I will come some other time. Yeah. But how did you feel? These are the Euros and I know, but yeah. uh, at the time at the time you 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 prioritize your club yeah, because yeah. It's not as it's not the senior it's not the senior team. Oh yeah. Um, so for me, playing with Ipswich in the championship would have been bigger than playing in the Euros. Is it? Yeah. Well, so I it's quite, it. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> quite quite interesting. Yeah. Such a talented footballer mm. that is. You know, sometimes when you have got the, uh, the tenacity or yeah. the the option to actually say, ah, I don't want to go yeah. there. It's, it's about somebody who is confident about yeah. their talents. You know, mm. but I know to worry about yeah. it. I'll get there some other time. Yeah. It's okay. Quite interesting. Yeah. We're just going to go for a break. When we come no back, we're going to get into something very interesting because Zimbabweans are waiting. They are yeah. waiting for this. And uh, they, they, they want to know what exactly is up. But I, I won't say what it is now, guys. But I know what you're thinking. But we're going to be coming back after the break to talk about Zimbabwe. We're going to talk about uh, Tristan Naidam. Playing for Zimbabwe or not playing for Zimbabwe? What happened? What did he do? What did they do? We want to hear all about that because I know that you're curious about it. Just don't move away. It's going get it, to get interesting in the third segment. Oh, my sister, Madam Boss, how are you? I want to go. I want to go. I want to go. I want to go. I to go. I want to to go. I to to Welcome back, guys. He's in touch with the legend. Yes, we have got a legend here, very young legend. You know, started his uh, professional career in England with Ipswich, but he had a very, very terrible injury and he had to retire from football. And we are talking about uh, Tristan Nidham. This, this gets interesting mm. now. Where it gets interesting, and we're talking about your, your call up to the mm. England under 18s, under 19s, Euros under 20 that you turned down. Mm. And uh, you, you were born in Zimbabwe. Yeah. He, at one time, you, you actually had a Zimbabwean passport, yes. right? So, wh wh what, what was going on in your mind when you got the call up? Mm -hmm. Did you ever think that you could, you could play for Zimbabwe? Um, so, at the time, I was playing for England, so it's never really... And there was a few people in Zimbabwe who had contacted me. I, I would, wouldn't be able to remember which manager or anything. Even when you were still... No, not 15, when I was still 16, small, when, yeah. I, when I now broke into the Ipswich team. Oh, okay. So now when I, when I now broke into the Ipswich team, I had a, had a few call-ups from Zimbabwe, a few people saying to come and play. But uh, you had already played in the England? And yes, the, I had already I had, I was playing oh, for okay. England at yeah, the time. Yeah, yes. that's what I, I wanted um, to clarify. So that I didn't really want to, 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 to choose them when I could still play for England and I was still, still progressing. You still have the chance, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and obviously Zim football is it's not where it you wanted to be, yeah, anyone be. wants it to be. <laughs> Um, yeah, you yeah. look at England like, and, yeah. and Zimbabwe, it's two completely different. So at the time I was, I was, I was uh, playing for England and I had a few, few, few calls from, from people in Zim. I don't have a Zim passport anymore, um, which again would have probably been an issue. I, uh, I tried when I was small to, I had a Zim passport, then when I moved to the, the UK it expired. Okay, yeah, I had the story yeah. in between. I had the story that you had a Zim passport. Mm -hmm. It expired, yeah. And then when you wanted to renew the Zim passport, mm -hmm. they couldn't. Yeah. They couldn't give you a Zim passport. They say now the rumor is it. That's when you decided ah, to help with Zimbabwe. Uh, then you went on to play for England. Now, like when they were getting the call ups, mm. like are you refused to give me a passport? So yeah. Why am I getting a call up? Yeah. So when I was small, I had the English passport, and uh, you can have you can hold dual nationality. Um, in Zimbabwe, apparently you can't. Um, so they refused to give me the passport. Um, because you now had a British, British passport. passport. So that's when I was small. 
now when I now be broke into the team, they wanted to give me dual nationality and give me the passport. Um, and you were angry. I wasn't. I wasn't <laughs> angry. I, you know, I, I don't. Yeah. I don't get too okay, angry yeah, over yeah, certain yeah. things. But yeah. Uh, they, did, like, yeah, they, they, they tried to, they tried to, and they tried to say, yeah, you, you can, we can give you the passport now, but why can you give me the passport now and not, not then? Not then, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, that, that, it didn't play too much of a, of a role, but it, or you'd also, way you think about it. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And I think it's the same for a few players now. Um, I know of a few, yeah. they say you can come and get your passport, but. They, they don't want to give them the passport to the other Zim embassy in England. They want them to come to Zim and collect it, which, why why do they need to do that? They can just collect it in England. Um, but yeah, so I think there's a few few things holding certain players back in the UK for coming to play to, uh, for Zim. Oh, so, so, so what did you say? What did you say to the, to the, to the guys that were calling? Did, the, they, so, did, did they call you? Did they come to you? No, they were all, or, just all yeah. WhatsApp based. Um, what, WhatsApp call up? Yeah, WhatsApp calls or messages. So they, they, they try on there. Um, and I'll just say no. I'm playing for England and I'm happy. Um, so, but he, I don't know what the future would have held if I carried on playing. Maybe I would have come to, to, to see what Zimbabwe was was like but yeah you 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 know when you when you get a text message did mm. you know did you even know who was texting you and have you ever met the person no i've never you? met anyone messaging me um mm -hmm. there was a guy called charlie white uh, a colored guy i think he he had called my mom to try and get me to come um bradley pritchard he had tried to he, he messaged me um oh bradley yes yeah yes, bradley. bradley once came yeah he had a problem with the passport as yeah, well did yeah. he tell you his problem no i've never i've never spoken to him um macaulay bond he's a, a macaulay had a, had a yeah, problem i yeah. think macaulay has got a passport now uh, does he i don't i don't know i, I last spoke to sure. macaulay when i was at when he was at ipswich which has been last year um, oh he also came to ipswich yeah to play he for came ipswich. yeah yes, yeah, yes, yeah. Yes, so yes. his family live in ipswich um yeah. and then i played with kundai benu at ipswich when when we were small Oh yeah, um, yeah. Oh, you played with Kundai as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I don't, I don't, I don't uh, Kundai must have a part. I'm not sure. He has got. Uh, he has played he has, a few yeah, times now for Zimbabwe. Yeah, I know his okay. parents were living here. Is uh, so I don't know. Um, yeah, yeah I don't he played know the, in the last Af the Af Afcon. Zimbabwe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he, mm. he did come down. Yeah. You 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 spoke about 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 Bradley. Mm. Bradley actually was in the team. We were, I think we were playing against Guinea. Mm. He came down. And he had been promised the passport. Mm. You know, on the, on game day, everybody thought he was gonna. He them. was going to play, mm. but, but the passport couldn't. never the passport never came, mm. yeah. and he went. That was the last that mm. was the last time we heard about uh, Bradley. But yeah. he really he really wanted uh, to 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 come. To, to come down mm. uh, come down. Okay, uh, if would it have made a difference? Would um, it have made a difference if maybe the Zimbabwe Football Association mm. uh, president yeah. flew to England with your father yeah. to come sit with it, you? It probably would have made a difference. Yeah, it it would have. Um, I think you, it's all well and good doing it off uh, your phone and texting and the, the manager doing it. But if you if you if you actually made a, an effort to go and see the player um, and tell him how you see the future of Zimbabwe and the football, because no one talks about no one talks good things about Zimbabwe and and Zifa and all of them. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I think if if they actually made a made a made a, a visit or even a phone call, a proper phone call, then it might have it might have made a difference. Yeah, and uh, what, in what you said, I, I didn't know about it that they also say that you cannot collect the passport uh, from the from from, from the mm. embassy and in, you, mm. you need to come down here yeah. to to apply. What do you what do you what, what what do you suggest? What do you think can actually uh, uh, pave the way for a lot of other young Zimbabwean footballers? In the UK, that are in the UK, that can make them want to play, to come down and play for and play for Zimbabwe. Um, I think if, I think I think you've just got to improve um, infrastructure and resources, um, and and the and the, as far as I'm aware, Zim aren't they, they don't have a governing body at the moment. Yeah, um, yeah we, FIFA have said they we, can't we, play we, in we competitions. Yeah, yeah. yeah we, we, um, we, so we, I mean that doesn't. It doesn't help. It, it doesn't. It's not going to appeal to to anyone. I don't think in the I UK. I think that that on that aspect, I think that mm -hmm. one is going to be sorted. Okay. Uh, yeah. Very, very so so once that get once that gets sorted, yeah. and once I think you see maybe um, improvement. I think once a few players start, then the the rest will follow. Once a few players start. Start coming to play. 
Who, who do you, who do you think? Do you think uh, who do, you, do who do you think can, can actually come? We have got um, do you look at Jordan the, Zamora. Jordan Zamora, he's, yes, he, he he's did, come. Yeah. Um, he, he has come. So Macaulay, um, Kundai. Uh, I think there's a boy who plays for Leon. Um, I'm not too sure on his name. Um, so I think once the the Europeans start coming, then the, mm. the the rest will. What do you think the problem? Why why is Macaulay Bond not coming? You spoke to him. He came to Ipswich. He, uh, I what did he, he, what did he, 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 he had come you? a few times, I think, and he then did, I think yeah. the passport again is holding him back. I don't think he can play for Zim until he gets his passport. But the passport situation, I think, is. I think he has got the passport now. I haven't spoken to him in got, a while. Or since so, he got the passport. Yeah. Yeah, mm. because I think he got the passport. Then mm. that's when he decided he uh, he was done. Yeah, mm. he, uh, he doesn't he doesn't he doesn't want to come down anymore. Yeah, I'm I'm not I'm not I'm not too sure on that. But <laughs> <laughs> from what I heard, he hadn't got the passport. So, so. You, you 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 have you have been you have been here mm. uh, in Zimbabwe and you have traveled around. Mm. Obviously, you have spoken to your dad. What do you think is the uh, the current situation in Zimbabwe in football, and what do you think uh, needs to be done? There's a lot of talent in, 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 in Africa as a whole. Um, yeah. It's now getting the resources, the right, the right people in charge to, to push that. Um, you look at Morocco, I think they, they had a, a thing of 12 million put into, their, yes. into, into football. By the government. Um, by the government. Yes. So if those things can happen, I mean, Zimbabwe is full of talent. No matter if cricket, rugby, football. Um, if you look at how many Zimbabweans are in Europe and actually playing, yeah. um, why is there no... There, there is talent here. It's now just picking at that talent, getting the right coaches, getting the right f facilities, the resources. Um, so I think it's those things that, that need to be pushed. And if the government can help with the funding, then, then there's no reason why Zim can't now become one of the good African teams. Yeah, especially with all the, the young players that exactly. are... Exactly. In the United Kingdom yeah. at, the, at the moment, so you 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 are best in England. Mm -hmm. Let's say uh, the Zimbabwe Football Association say, you know what, uh, Tristan, you you are Zimbabwean. Mm -hmm. uh, you were here uh, the in 2022 yeah. over Christmas, so you mm -hmm. know you're here. So we we want you to help us there in in, mm -hmm. in, in England. What can you do to actually like mobilize the youngsters and all the players, Zimbabwean footballers that uh, that are best in? in England to actually want to come down to, to, to play for Zimbabwe? Um, I think the, there has to be more change here before anyone there can start be, doing anything. Before you can, uh, before yeah. you can agree to do it. Yeah, I think I, I, <laughs> yeah, I, I yeah. wouldn't be able to I do understand. anything from there if there's no change not, here. Not, with the, in, not in this situation. Yeah, exactly. There's, uh, there's, not, uh, there's not... I mean, Charlie White, Bradley Pritchard, they tried with me, but there's not... If the, if the you, situation, you are not convinced. Yeah, if the situation yes. isn't good here, then yeah. I wouldn't feel comfortable telling yeah. someone to to do it. Yeah. Do 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 you think uh, do you think Rhys Nelson can actually uh, one day if things if things get better, improve if things, things improve then yeah I don't I don't see I don't see why not you look at the uh, Alex Iwobi was playing for England he came to play for Nigeria yeah um, Wilfred Zaha went to play yeah, for Ivory Coast, Ivory Coast yeah. so I don't see why if things in change if things improve then why those players wouldn't want to come. If they're not playing for England, yeah, because Zimbabweans they will, they, they've been looking at you, Macaulay Boni, yeah. Bradley Pritchard. They see Rhys Nelson. Yeah. You know, there was also um, what do you call if, um, 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 Nyatanga. There was there was mm. one one time there was Brighton Nyatanga who was playing in the mm. in the championship as well. He mm. he's uh, he's from here as well, but he chose to play for for Wales. Oh, okay. At that time, yeah, mm. he, he chose to play for Wales. Mm. There are a lot of youngsters. There's uh, Tivonga, Tivonga Shesha, have you ever no. heard of him? Mm -mm. He's playing for, he's also playing for, I think he's playing for Cardiff. Okay. He's playing for Cardiff now. There are a lot of youngsters there. Yeah. So maybe, probably, there, there is a need yeah. for, for ambassadors mm -hmm. in England. Yeah. Who have played in England, yeah. who actually can go, like, the, the Bruce Groblers of, of this yeah. world, uh, the... Uh, the the Peter Glovers of this world, mm. Benjani's mm. to actually do do a job. But like you said, you need, we need to first address sort, what's happening uh, here. Sort sort, yeah. sort things out here. Yeah. So do you, do you see yourself coming to Zimbabwe to to do football anytime? If the chance was available, then yes, I would. Um, I think there's a lot of talent here that could probably probably be helped. Um, so yes, I would 
I would you like really to... Have you an academy in Zimbabwe? Yeah, so I've got my own... Well, I'm, I've literally just started my own academy, or not academy, but coaching set up in England. Yeah. So that's a few months old now. Um, and, I mean, if the, if the chance became available to, to come here and try something, then, then I would mm. want to do it. Oh, that would be that would be actually yeah. that would be that would be that would be brilliant yeah. to actually have if somebody like you coming mm. from uh, from England to come down here to actually say I think it brings confidence yeah. to uh, to a lot of parents yeah. you know to actually know that this is a child that started it under nine yeah. in Ipswich you yeah. can actually if you are a Zimbabwean who was born here mm. you can also make it uh, make make it make 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 it that big yeah. anything anything that you wanna talk about football or to Zimbabweans to whatever you mm. feel like you need to say it, say it out. No, I think, like I said, there's a lot of talent here. So it's in schools, um, they have to push it in schools. You know, in, in England, there's so many um, clubs and from four years old, they start playing. Um, yeah. They start playing in schools, they start playing with their friends. Um, there's so many Sunday league clubs. By Sunday league, I mean local teams. Local teams, yes. That, that play, I don't know of any local teams in Zim that, yeah, I know, yeah, I know, know I, I mean? know, I know. If in, in, in England, you go anywhere and there's just football. Yeah, um, I was talking about it, I was thinking about it a few months ago. I was mm. actually talking about it on my Facebook page that I went to my uh, local, my hometown. Yeah. I didn't see kids playing football on yeah. the weekend. Mm. You know, it's, it's, it's something, it's a very big uh, cause for concern. Yeah. Then when you see kids, they're not playing. Probably there's no influence. They yeah. don't see a mm -hmm. lot more football on TV. Yeah. They don't see a lot more football in the Premier Soccer League in Zimbabwe. Yeah. So they don't have any um, heroes. Yeah, they don't. Yeah. Em 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 yeah. em em emulate and all that. But anyway, Nido. Thank, thank you thank very you. much, uh, Tristan, for coming for, for coming for coming to the show to share with us their story. You know, you know, there was a time that when you started talking about you are playing again, mm. you know, I my I was lead up, yeah. and I'm like ah, mm. so this guy is back. Yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's I'm unfortunate. Un mm. Unfortunately, you you can you you couldn't carry on. Yeah. But talent wise, we know that you were very talented. We yeah. used to follow you, and uh, we, it's actually a very I think it's um, it's, it's it's very good. You know, for, mm. for Zimbabweans uh, that are watching this show as well to actually know that, like I said, that a kid that was born in Zimbabwe yeah. can actually go out there and make it yeah. in, uh, in England as well. So that's, so that's inspiration. Yeah. You know, we, we love it. We want, we, want to, we, mm. we want to have it here so that we can always communicate. I think yeah. out of, of record and out of the camera, I think we're going to we, we'll talk more yeah. about mm. football and, uh, and see what we can do, you know, to, to help uh, improve football in Zimbabwe. Yeah. You know, we don't have to wait for the Football for Association the, yeah, exactly. or for the government, mm. but I think if you're a football person, yeah. you can always try to do what you can, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. in your own capacity. To actually uh, improve football, maybe one day being a manager. Take, <laughs> no, I'm not sure that know? far. No, you, you don't want to no, be an agent. Not. Uh, I wouldn't want to be a manager at that level. Oh, I enjoy coaching younger kids and bring, try and bring in the next generation. But not, I was uh, bring come down here, bring kids from Zimbabwe, take them. To and I, I would. I would like to that, do that. Yeah, that's if what I can see, if I can see some talent here, then I've, I've got the contacts in the UK. To, that's what to try. you're talking about. Yeah. That's what you're talking about. I know there are a lot of coaches that are yeah. listening. Mm -hmm. They'll come to me, they'll yeah. be asking, can we, we speak with the talent yeah. of this ABC? I think they should, we, we can find a way yeah. to actually mm -hmm. synchronize yeah. everything, everything else then with your contacts and things can actually happen. Exactly. Because like yeah. I said, we need to improve Zimbabwean football yeah. even in our own capacities. Yeah. Whatever we can do, we don't have to wait for the authorities to do, to do it. But like mm -hmm. I said, the government needs to get involved, yeah. the councils, the clubs, mm -hmm. everybody, all the yeah. stakeholders need to get involved if we want to take Zimbabwe football to yeah. the next level. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming on to the show. This is the Nyarazo Group. I'm Nyarazo Group powering this show. My name is Alois Bunjira. Yes, we had Naiden, Tristan Naiden, Naiden in the studio. He was telling us about his footballing career that was cut short by injury, but what a player he was. I watched him play for Ipswich, yes, he was a damn good player. So, your parents out there, even your kid that is here in Zimbabwe, Tristan was born in Zimbabwe, he went on to make it big in England. It shows that this talent in Zimbabwe, it just needs to be nurtured. Tap the talent and nurture the talent, then we can actually do a lot of good for Zimbabwe footballers. But for now, uh, we've run out of time. I'm out of here. we we'll see you next week when we bring you another Zimbabwe footballing legend to come here and share with us their footballing journey. But we can only wish Tristan Nairam all the best in his endeavor when he goes back to England. Cheers, guys.